Hello and welcome back from Pilot Training Solutions. Today we're going to go over one of the most infamous instruments in your airplane, the compass. We're going to tackle it and all of its errors. And as usual, let's get right to it. The magnetic compass is the only direction-seeking instrument in the airplane. It requires no power to operate. And although it is subject to many errors, the compass is an important flight instrument. Now let's take a peek at those errors in detail. Let's start with variation. Magnetic variation is the angular difference between true north and magnetic north. We would like for the North Pole to be at the top of the world and the South Pole to be at the bottom of the world. But the reality is that the poles are in constant movement from east to west and that is why every 10 years or so the runway you used to take off from is not named runway 22 anymore but runway 23. Runways are oriented magnetically, and as the poles move, so do the numbers on the runway. Not only do the poles move from east to west, they also completely change polarity from north to south on an average of about 450,000 years. So while today going north will bring you to Santa's house, maybe in about 100,000 years you might end up where the emperor penguins live. So, to make sure that flying in a certain direction brings us where we really need to go, we use true north as opposed to magnetic, and correct for the error based on our latitude and what the variation on our chart tells us. Just remember that east is least and west is best, meaning we add a westerly variation to our heading and subtract an easterly one. Magnetic dip. Now, not only do the poles constantly move, but the lines of magnetic force are parallel to the Earth's surface only at the equator. Near the poles, the lines of force angle towards the surface. The magnetic compass card aligns itself with the lines of force. This causes a downward deflection or dip of the compass card. It is this dip which causes errors in the magnetic compass. The first error we're going to tackle is the northerly turning error. In a bank, the compass card dips to the low side of the turn. This gives an incorrect turn indication. This error is most apparent on headings of north and south. When making a turn from a heading of north, the compass briefly gives an indication of a turn in the opposite direction. When making a turn from a heading of south, the direction of turn indicated is correct, but the rate of turn of the compass card is faster than the actual turn rate of the airplane. In the northern hemisphere, for a turn to the north, the compass will lag the turn by approximately the value of the latitude of the aircraft. Therefore, to roll out of a compass turn to north, the rollout should begin before the compass indication arrives at north by a value equal to the latitude plus the normal rollout need. On turns to the south, the compass will lead the turn by a value equal to the latitude and rollout should be started after the compass passes south by this value minus the rollout lead. Just remember the acronym you knows undershoot north and overshoot south. Some turns are actually impossible using the compass. For example, if we're at a latitude of about 30 degrees, a turn from a heading of 030 to a heading of north cannot be accomplished by use of the compass, as we would have to undershoot by about 30 degrees, but being that we are already on 030, that would not be possible. In this case, we need to use something called a time turn. By using the turn coordinator and establishing a constant rate turn to the left, all we need to do is count to 10 and voila, we are on the desired heading of north. A standard rate turn means we turn approximately 3 degrees per second. So 30 degrees would take 10 seconds. Now for the acceleration error. Acceleration error is also a dip error. The compass card tilts upward when accelerating and downward when decelerating. This results in an error most apparent on headings of east and west while it's negligible on headings of north and south. When accelerating on a west or east heading, this error causes a turn indication towards the north. When decelerating, the compass indicates a turn towards the south. Just remember the acronym ANS. Accelerate north, decelerate south. The final error we're going to cover is deviation. Magnetic fields from equipment in the airplane pull the compass card out of alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. 
This is called deviation. A compass correction card in the airplane shows the amount of deviation. So for example, if we wanted to steer north, according to this compass card, we would steer 003. And for a heading of east, 088. So deviation depends on the heading you fly, but also on the electrical equipment in use. So, the compass does have many problems, but if you think about it, it's the only instrument that cannot fail. During taxi, just make sure that the compass is full of liquid and that it is moving freely. At that point, the only way it can fail is if the magnetic fields of Earth fail. If that happens, the compass failing would be the least of your problems. And again, if you would rather memorize all the questions and answers on the tests, then you should probably not waste any time with our software. But if you would like to ace the knowledge test by learning the material inside and out, then we're definitely what you're looking for. Call us toll free at one eight five five pass fa or visit us at passfaexams.com and see what we're talking about. Till next time, happy flying and blue skies from Pilot Training Solutions.